Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Race the Transfer Rumour show. Yeah, that's right. This is the show that rates the transfer rumour. And guess what? Daz is here to race the transfer rumour. Daz, what's up? What's the crack, Keith? The World Cup's on now as well, so we're watching, hopefully, Iran will trash England now in a few minutes' time. <laughs> Probably not, but anyway, we've no rumours from uh, England or Iran, unfortunately, for people, <laughs> just in case you tune in for that. Sorry about that. Daz, you're going to be rating these as usual on a scale uh, between I'm 1 and 10. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be rating these on a scale between 1 to 10 as usual as well. And uh, interestingly, in one of our videos the other day, one of the rumours was Tyreek Wilson to Shelburne, and that actually came to pass. I think it happened the day after the video was released. There's a good chance, guys, just quickly, that one or two players in one of the videos might actually be signed. That can possibly happen after we release the video. Now, it hasn't happened yet, but it could happen. It could have happened there. So if that happens, you know, video gets released and the player is signed, it's because we've done it before that. But yeah, we'll get into it, Daz. Anyway, first one up, Evan Caffrey from UCD, UCD midfield player to Dundalk. Now, Dundalk brought in Paul Doyle, a UCD midfield player, last year. So, um, are they going to raid UCD again? Yeah, I think so. I could I could see this one happen. You know, Dundalk need to get a bit of use, I think, in their team. They need to get a few young players because they don't really develop any players. So, if they can get a player that's already playing, that's young, capable, I think that's what they're going to try and do. Um, obviously, with UCD staying up, um, it's put a, a lot of the players back into the shop window yet again because they've shown togetherness, they've shown strength and ability, they've shown a lot of mental strength to get through that playoff and to stay up. So I think it's going to put a lot of the better players again back in the shop window. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I could see this one very well happening. I rate that a seven. I do think he'll have a lot of clubs knocking on his door. Like obviously the Dublin clubs come to mind. But if Dundalk's in for him, you know, team in Europe, he's going to go there over the likes of Bowes, maybe, I think. So, i put that as seven. Mm. What's interesting is they seem to be linked with midfield players and they have five of them at the club, but uh, seven out of ten for you there. Chris Lyons has obviously left Drogheda and he's been linked with a move back to his hometown of Bray. He played there before. It is his hometown. He works there. Uh, new manager in with Bray, obviously in Ryan, looking at a bit of a, a new beginning there. Could you see that one happening? He's unattached, as I said there. Yeah, look, <laughs> I suppose he's coming off the back of a few very good seasons. And obviously, what, it's something like 40 goals and 120 appearances, 140 appearances, something like that. But yeah. it's a good record for the club stature. He was at, you know, he wasn't at, you know, his respect, a top club, but he did score a lot of goals. So yeah. he's got real ability. Um, but again, Keith, I think it's, he's going to have a few suitors. <clears throat> I don't think it's just going to be one or two clubs in for him. He obviously knows what the back of the net is. He's experienced in the league. He definitely have a few players after him. Ian Ryan has been, you know, he's looking at a lot of players he's worked with already. And a lot of these rumours we think were in the past two weeks, Ian Ryan's already worked with all these players. He, he brings to mind someone like Steve Bruce, who re-signed the same players he always works with, he knows and trusts. <laughs> um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. I actually think it's quite a good thing because he always he, he knows the players, he knows what he's going to get out of them. So I would put this one quite high. I, I would put this at seven. I, I would say it would happen. I think it would happen and he'd be a great addition to that team. So Chris Lyons Bray, 7 out of 10. Now, another player who's unattached at the moment, uh, Ben Curtis, uh, Sam Curtis, his older brother, left St. Patrick's Athletic, uh, won the under-19 um, league with Pats last year, lost the final, uh, the cup final in Daily Mount. But uh, a player that um, wasn't getting his chance at St. Patrick's Athletic, still only 18. He's been linked with a move to Waterford. Do you think that'd be a good move for Ben? Yeah, I think that'd be a great move for him. I think he'd get in and I think he would play there. I think he would develop as a player and Look, Waterford are very unlucky not to come up this season. A lot Still of full time, of course, as well. Even in the playoffs, you know, and mm. obviously they've got their links for England as well. So if he starts doing really well, they're also saying move to England won't happen for him. You know, lovely facilities, some very good players if they can keep their team together. Uh, I think this, I, I would put this one quite again. Um, I, I would probably put at key. I don't think it's definitely going to happen overnight because, mm. you know, if a team in the Premier Division comes in for him and he's going to play, he'd probably go there. But Obviously, Waterford is not a million miles away from where he is. So, um, yeah, I could put that one at six. Six out of ten. Yeah, it's interesting that one as well because, um, you know, a lot of players have left the path, say, he was part of the first team squad, but 
done well at Pats under 19s and one or two haven't broken in, but it's kind of done them no harm either because they've moved on and done well at other clubs. So it's not a disaster if you don't make it at Pats initially, to be fair, either. So that's one to keep an eye, eye on. It's interesting. Uh, once again, like if you're a Dundalk and a Brain of Waterford fan, let us know what you think of those links. Tunday to Bowes. Now, this was during the rounds last year. He ended up going to St. Patrick's <coughs> Athletic. Struggled to break in at St. Patrick's Athletic. A player that seems to do well. Seems to do better when he comes on as a sub, does than when he starts games. And I think that's because he, he's strong, he's quick, and, you know, players get tired and you see him coming on and he's a bit of a bull. But um, you'd argue strongly the Bowles could do with a striker, that's for sure. So how are you seeing Tunde to Bowles? I believe he will leave Pats for sure, though. Oh, I actually would honestly love well. yeah. yeah, I I would love to see this one. Um obviously anyone watching they know the story. I don't know any of these transfers, so Keith's gonna throw at me. So every ball is one, I have no idea who it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. Uh obviously Tunde was linked with us, I think, two years running in a row. He was linked with a move he'll to get there balls. eventually. <laughs> that never happened, exactly. He'll get there eventually. And I think he's a type of player that the Bulls fans would love. Fast, mm. strong, energetic, positive, um, really good off the bench, like you said, he brings energy to the team, gets mm-hmm. forward when he can. Strong, powerful. I think that's what we're missing in the team at the minute. We look, you could we, argue similar to Promise in a sense, who left obviously. Yeah, I looked at the fan favorite, he was a fan's favorite, and he was growing every game. Like, what a player he was. He was an absolute bull in a tank coming on. When I watched him in Germany against you in Berlin, he was one of the very few players that didn't look out of place. So, that's saying something, I think. Tunde is someone I would really welcome to Bowes. Obviously, Bowes are trying to build on the Declan Divine. I think we only have. Two strikers at the minute, Afton Abbey and Ethan Varian. Mm. Um, probably missing someone there, but that's two no, I think that's it, the forwards, yeah. You no, know, one was out injured for most seasons mm. after Abbey, so we had one. And Varian obviously needs to find his feet. Tunde, I think, would be a great addition to Bowes. I would put him at a seven. I'm probably living in hope that he would sign for us, but I would really welcome him in that Bowes. I would really like if he came to Bowes. Mm, interesting. And finally, this is now this is a big one, and this would be mad if it happened. Brian Maher, goalkeeper, Derry City, obviously. To Shamrock Rovers. Now, Mar is under contract. We know that Manus still hasn't committed to another season in the league. If Rovers were to, say, take Mar from Derry, obviously they'd have to pay a big fee, but it would be a real statement, wouldn't it, to take probably the next best goalkeeper of a Manus in the league, you know what I mean, away from what's considered to be your rivals who are apparently coming for you. It'd be a massive statement if that happened, wouldn't it? And it would, probably wouldn't be good for Derry, even for big money. I have to say, Key, I actually don't find that one quite mad. I think that's quite a realistic move. I think Shamrock Rovers have money to spend. Mm-hmm. And I think, mm-hmm. realistically, we've seen what Dundalk did two, three years ago. They spent money, but brought players in from abroad. It didn't work out. And I was saying to you and to you, lads, spend money in your own league. Bring players here that we know that are good and that can play at this level, which is more, I think, more smart. We're spending yeah. 50 grand on him, the 50 grand mm-hmm. on the keeper from, I don't know, the oh, yeah. said who's mm-hmm. supposed to be really good in his league, but might not be good over here. I think it would be an extra move for Brian Maher on a personal level, an extra move for Shamrock Rovers. Whether he was to stay as number two for half the season and drift into the first team or not. But, you know, obviously... Of course, Manus may retire still, so that's a question. Like, so, you know... Maybe maybe number one choice straight away, but Mm. I would see something in this. The fact that a fee has to be paid for and Derry might not want to release him puts a lot of spanners in the works, really. So I wouldn't wear it quite highly, but I definitely wouldn't write it off. I Mm. I put it at a five out of ten. It's definitely... Not like it's not, there's not a chance that it won't happen. And mm. obviously, Rovers have to pay a fee. How much will they pay? Will Derry let him go? There's a lot of questions about that. But I think it'd be great for him on a personal level and excellent for Shamrock Rovers if they could get that deal done. So I would put that five out then. Yeah, I think it'd be um, a, a good statement for Rovers if it happened, but a poor statement from Derry if it happened. But another one to watch. And guys, let us know what you think in the comments. Any of those moves, Rovers fans, Derry fans, let us know what you think about the Brian Marr link. Tunday to Bowes as well from a Bowes or even a Pat scenario and all the other ones as well. Subscribe to the channel, hit your bell notification button and thanks for watching once again. Thanks, Daz. Cheers, Keith.